Why don't we go ahead and uh, allow uh, Karen to walk us through her uh, PowerPoint, if you're able to, or however you want to, however you want to coordinate that, Thomas. I appreciate your help again. Yeah, and I can. I'll. Um, I know we have kind of the initial slides. I can slide or screen share um, from just like if you wanted to give that give a little bit of intro, Gavin, about Southside Slope Neighbor Association. I can share briefly about the dam process, and then and then if that works to flow into Sarah and Karen, your presentation. Yep. Well, sure. Um, so I'd like to welcome um, at least our one uh, our one participant to this uh, development activities meeting. Uh, my name is Gavin Robb. I am uh, a board member of about six or seven years on the Southside Slopes Neighborhood Association. Um, I co-chair the zoning committee, uh, so I generally am involved in you know development type items uh, that may pop up uh, within our neighborhood boundaries. Um, we've been an RCO for a couple of years now. Uh, so we're excited to to play that role as sort of helping uh, get the word out on on development and similar projects um, in the neighborhood. And so, um, you know, I'll maybe I'll turn it over to Thomas just to, so he can explain a little more about you know what what triggers a, a development activities meeting and why we're here tonight. Sure. Yeah. 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 So the South Side South Side Slopes Neighbor Association, um, as a local registered community organization for the South Side Slopes. Um, serves basically as a, a key kind of liaison or, or conduit for uh, receiving community feedback when there's uh, development activities in the South Side Slope. So in, in, in this case, uh, proposals for, um, yeah, for, for public art projects um, that would go eventually before the, the Art Commission. Um, and so um, it's a chance for the community to, to come and share their feedback um, in, in general when there's uh, specific thresholds of development met, whether public or private projects um, that are going to the public, certain, um, some of the different public commissions, um, then those those trigger this kind of formal development activities meeting uh, or DAM for short, um, where there's a chance for the, the person doing the, the uh, proposal or development to, to present and then some Q&A uh, and, and, and kind of talking through community comments about it. Um, so uh, this is this slide here just shows some of the some of the thresh the uh, the thresholds basically that that are uh, what need to be met um, for having a dam um, or what at least th those minimum requirements um, when when one of these is met that that does trigger a dam you can certainly also um, have have meetings anyway in addition to this but um, the, in this case because it's it's um, application that's going to art commission. Uh, that's what, what triggered it in this situation, work happening in the public public uh, realm. Uh, but also, yeah, there's other, in other, case, other cases when there's like large residential developments or major kind of master plans or, um, or significant, like, you know, really large structures being built as kind of shown here. Um, and that, that also triggers dams. Um, so I think I'll pass it back to you, Gavin. I know it's on the moderation piece. Um, People are certainly welcome to uh, a couple of different ways of, of sharing feedback. Um, if you would like to cover this part, sure. Um, you know, I think again, we're we have a very small small crowd today, so um, yeah. you know, we we can handle it by hand raising. If uh, if our neighbor wants to raise her hand, or frankly, just say something at it at, at once the <laughs> once the presentation is complete, I think I think this is a crowd even I can manage. Um, so you know, uh, certainly we will. Uh, have an opportunity for any folks who, especially including those who may show up late, to uh, to ask questions of of Karen or, or any of us to to uh, figure out sort of next steps. Um, and so that's that's pretty much it. We don't have it. It's going to be very informal tonight. That's great. I got a note. Yeah, this is a bit of background Southside slopes, but if that if you um, after that kind of I think we can shift over to Sarah and Karen. Yeah, I think I think we can get to let's let's get to the main course. Enough of these appetizers. Sounds <laughs> good. So I would just jump in quickly to say I'm Sarah Minard. I'm the public art and civic design manager for the city of Pittsburgh, and I'm thrilled to be able to introduce Karen and her project to this intimate gathering <laughs> this evening. As Thomas mentioned, um, this is a requirement for Karen's public art project to 
um, do a development activities meeting before she presents to the Art Commission for full approval of the project. Um, I thought I'd just do a little bit of background about how we got here and why we're here, and then I'll turn it over to Karen to, to talk about the project. In fall of 2020, the City of Pittsburgh issued a call for artists to realize a percent for art public art project, which would be developed and implemented as part of the city's redesign of Southside Park. Um, Percent for art is actually how most public art projects in the city of Pittsburgh are realized. And that term refers to a program or city ordinance where some percentage of the total project costs are earmarked to fund and install public art. And in Pittsburgh, actually in 1977, chapter 175 of our city code was amended to introduce this percent for art requirement. So Karen is in storied and um, good company in terms of realizing public artworks for the city's collection. Pittsburgh artist Karen Minsmoyer was selected from a small but compelling group of national applicants that answered that call for artists in fall of 2020 and was ultimately selected by a panel which included community representation um, as well as artists and um, city um, city stakeholders. Um, Southside Park, as I'm sure you all are well know, is a 60 acre park which lies at the intersection of the Southside Flats, Southside Slopes and Arlington neighborhoods. And the artwork that Karen is working on will be created for a location within the phase one renovation of the Southside Park on the northwest side of the park. And we um, are still trying to understand shifting construction and permitting schedules, but we think we anticipate that this artwork installation would take place somewhere between late 2022 and early to mid 2023. Karen has spent much of the past year and then some uh, talking to and learning about the park, the surrounding communities and park users in order to inform her design concept. And with that um, brief introduction, I'm pleased to introduce Karen now to talk about her project. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Uh, let me just try and it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So, um, does somebody, would you like to, me to share my screen or would you like to go ahead and run the presentation? Tom? I made you a co host, Karen. So, oh, you, you did. You're able to do it now. Yeah. Great. Okay. And then one note too, I know this is being, this is being recorded and, and Gavin, I understand this will be, Southside Slopes typically will post this on, on the, on its YouTube page, is that right? Uh, yes, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I'll, we'll do whatever it is that we normally do. I think we do have some social media type things that we will make it available. So yeah, thanks for remembering that, Thomas. For sure, thank you. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes, okay, great. Um, okay, um, so thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys taking the time. Um, and so before I talk about the concept uh, that I developed for uh, the artwork at the park, I just wanted to talk about my process a little bit. Um, so in terms of community engagement, um, my community engagement was really a combination of in-person and virtual meetings with both community groups and individuals, as well as making an online survey available on Engage PGH, uh, where people could give input on what they wanted to see in an artwork at the park. Um, so I attended multiple meetings of the Friends of Southside Park. As you know, they're a very active group in the park. So I've been to a number of their uh, monthly meetings and I've gotten to know them. Um, I went to the Southside Slopes Neighborhood Association summer picnic last year, uh, the Southside Community Council and Arlington Civic Council I attended as well. 
Um, and a lot of those groups shared out the Engage PGH link um, in their newsletters and e-blasts, encouraging people to participate in that. Um, I also tabled at Goat Fest, uh, which was last fall. And I met, um, had some individual meetings with a number of folks, including Sarah Thompson, who's the landscape architect with Pashik MTR, who did a lot of the landscaping, landscape planning for uh, the phase one renovation. Barton Kirk of Ethos Collaborative, they're designing the stormwater for phase one. I met with Janice Sarah of Friends of Southside Park, who wrote um, a document called Southside Park Stream Daylighting. Um, and of course, met with the, uh, the city planning project team, uh, including uh, Sarah, Tony Cavaline, and also the um, Andrea Ketzel, who is the senior project landscape architect uh, for DPW. And I also presented um, a similar presentation to what you're going to see tonight. I presented that to Friends of Southside Park at their annual meeting on Zoom a couple of weeks ago just to get their input as well. Um, so some of the research that I did, um, the master plan for the for Southside Park that was done in 2018 was a wealth of information and was really helpful. Um, it contains lots of historical information, photos, maps, um, and they also did um, a lot of community engagement for that process and included a summary of what they found uh, in the master plan and that proved helpful. Um, I got some historical materials from Friends of Southside Park that they shared. Uh, I, of course, did multiple site visits to the park, um, spent time there, and photographed all around the phase one uh, area. Uh, the Engage PGH survey, unfortunately, had low participation. However, um, the master plan process, um, you know, as I said, they included a summary of the community engagement they did. And while they were asking different questions for their community engagement, um, one thing that was mentioned is that the community expressed an interest in showcasing water at the park. So, um, so that was helpful and meaningful to me. Um, and also I reviewed the construction drawings, which, which turned out to be surprisingly interesting as I'll show you. Um, so just as a reminder, the, um, the phase one uh, area of the park, that's where my project needs to be located. Um, and this area that's in color is the phase one renovation area. So it's the section of the park that runs along um, 18th Street. Um, up at the top of the hill are sports fields and a playground. And then the lower part of the strip contains um, stormwater pools, as well as a parking area. Okay, um, so this slide shows um, an 1872 map showing the historic location of a stream. And this was included in the master plan for the park. Um, and this historic location of the stream is now a location of a sewer. The stream is no longer there. When I laid out the construction documents uh, for the phase one renovation, um, I put them all together and then I, I took some markers and highlighted some different things just to make them more obvious and visible. And this double orange line that you see is a sewer line that runs underneath the park. This is a six foot diameter uh, sewer line. The yellow part is walking paths. And then this sort of winding uh, shaded gray area is a stormwater stream and stormwater stepped pools. Um, so this is gonna be surface water. I was interested in a couple of things. I was interested in the fact that the sewer um, replaces uh, where the historic stream was, which I believe was called Quarry Run. So that's now uh, buried underground. Um, and the other thing that I was interested in is this, this new surface stream that's being formed kind of winds back and forth uh, across where the sewer line is. Um, so I was intrigued that there are these two levels of water, 
but one level of water is completely hidden from us. You know, I, I don't know about you, but when I go to the park, I'm not aware of the fact that there's a sewer line uh, running underneath the ground. And I was, I was kind of interested in that. And so while those two levels of water are there, then there's also the clouds in the sky are traveling overhead all the while. So that's actually a third level of water. Um, so really you've got a full, um, the full water cycle is present there. There's the underground water, the surface water, and uh, the water in the sky is present. So I wanted to find some way to talk about that and sort of um, mark the presence of the sewer and the former stream. So how to do that? Um, these are some uh, images that I looked at for inspiration. So in thinking about, you know, how do you mark the location of something important? Well, one tactic that people have used over the years is making stone cairns. And that's what these two images on the right, on the left-hand side are. Um, it can be a sort of rough, jagged stack of stones, or it can be a, a smoother kind of shape. Um, but a stack of stones is often used to mark an important location. And then the next two images show images of wells. So those obviously mark the location of underground water. Um, and they're frequently cylindrical. So um, if we look at a sort of cross section of the brick sewer here in the middle, um, that's very similar to this brick uh, cylindrical well shape here on the left. And then thinking about, well, how do I, how do I call in the clouds and bring them into it? Um, I'm a child of the 70s and 80s, so I remember those garden gazing balls that everybody had. They're still around, but I remember them being very popular when I was a child, and I was fascinated by them. So um, I was intrigued by the idea of using a mirrored dome or a mirrored ball to reflect the clouds and, and bring in movement to the piece. Okay, um, so this is a rough concept sketch that you're seeing. This is like a, this is a styrofoam model that I made. Um, and the working title that I'm using is called Cloud Well. So it references the water cycle and it brings together water in three locations. The water in the sky, in terms of the clouds, the water on the surface, which is the stormwater streams and the water underground, which is the sewer. Um, so there's the top, what you're seeing is a shallow mirrored dome, which reflects the clouds. The location is near where the surface stream and the underground sewer converge. And the circular shape and six foot diameter of the well is similar to the underground sewer. So this just uh, gives you some dimensions here. Uh, on the left, you see an overhead shot of the model. The intention is that the diameter of the mirror will be about six feet, which is the diameter of the brick sewer that's there. Um, and the well will be about three feet high um, and then six feet in diameter. So some questions that I'm still working on or haven't decided, um, is it feasible to fabricate it within the budget? I do think it's feasible to fabricate it within the budget, which is why I'm um, bringing it to you. Um, another thing I'm thinking about is accessibility to folks. Um, it is gonna be located in an area of the park that is ADA accessible, but I'm thinking about is a step or a ramp necessary for you know, kids and shorter folks to be able to get up a little higher and see it? Uh, or maybe a ramp uh, to make it wheelchair accessible. Um, but if once we talk about where it might be located, um, I think that um, the walking deck might take care of that. Um, so we'll see. The steepness of the dome is another question. Um, if it's more shallow, then it's gonna reflect what's directly above. It'll reflect the clouds more and the trees and people less. Uh, but if it's a little bit of a steeper dome, that'll discourage people from standing on it or sitting on it. So there's a balance to strike there. Um, obviously, there also needs to be some drainage holes worked in so that water doesn't collect on top of the dome. 
Um, and I haven't decided yet whether it should be made of stone or brick. Um, both could be appropriate. You know, there. Here I'm thinking of it, the model shows it being made of stone, maybe similar to what's found in the park, but also obviously there used to be a brick factory on the site, so using brick could be appropriate. And as um, Kitty from the Friends of Southside Park pointed out, there's tons of old brick buried in the park that could be dug up and possibly, you know, used for the sculpture. So that could be interesting to actually use brick that's, that comes from the park. Um, and then with the number of glass factories that used to be in the south side, it could even be something like glass blocks or glass bricks. I don't think that's in the budget, but um, it's a possibility. Um, so in terms of locations, this shows um, two tiny little red dots here. Um, and those um, those two locations were um, suggested by Andrea Ketzel, who's the senior project landscape architect for DPW. Um, and as I said before, I was looking for a location where um, the surface stream converges with the underground sewer. It also needs to be near a walking path, and we wanted it to be ADA accessible. And so these two locations meet that those criteria. Sorry, this is skipping slides for me. Okay, so option one is at the lower boardwalk. So that's where um, the red circle is. Um, and this site allows for ADA access. Um, views from above on the nearby steps, which are right here. So you'll get a nice view um, of the top of it as you're coming down the steps. Um, it avoids being in the step pools, but it's nearby to the surface channel. Um, and then there's also a bench in the area that could be um, moved to accommodate the artwork. Um, and since you've got the, the, um, the boardwalk right here, hopefully a, a step or a wheelchair ramp wouldn't be necessary. And then option number two is at the upper boardwalk. This also allows for ADA access. Um, and the, for this one, you have views from above from the observation platform, which is approximately four feet um, above uh, the artwork location. Um, it's nearby to the surface channel, which is uh, indicated in blue here. And there's also a bench in this area as well. It can be moved to accommodate the artwork as needed. Um, and in terms of timing, um, I guess I need to check back in with Sarah, but I think the last time I checked in with Teresa, um, this shows the line between the phase 1A and phase 1B. Phase 1A is basically the upper part of the park up above the um, 18th Street entrance, and phase 1B is down below that point. Um, and I believe um, Andrea Ketzel said it'd be 2024 until phase 1B was wrapped up. Uh, and the artwork could be installed because basically the artwork will be one of the last things to be put in is my understanding. So, um, so we've got some time, which is not bad. And that's all I have. So I'm happy to answer any questions or comments or thoughts. Thanks, thanks for that presentation, Karen. That's a, I mean, uh, obviously, it's, this is a, a, by definition, I think very subjective, but I, th I think it's a really, really cool idea. Personally, um, I love that that rendering that you have up there, but and kind of the way that the stone and the uh, and the glass work. Um, I, I, I didn't really think about people standing on it, but you're, that's, I think that's a really smart, uh, you know, thing to, to consider as part of it. Maybe sacrifice a little cloud uh, reflection, but, um, you know, probably you know, extend the life of the, the uh, art piece for a significant, significant, significant period of time. So very cool. Mm -hmm. um, we did have okay. another uh, participant join us. So I know our first participant uh, was just sort of listening in. She's certainly welcome to provide any comments, but um, I know Andrew Fetzko, who's a, one of our, my fellow board members, uh, showed up to support me. I did, I swear I did not have to text him and say, please come support me. He did <laughs> purely of his own volition. 
Uh, so, uh, Mr. Fesco, do you want to jump in and make any comments? I'm not sure if you saw the whole presentation or not. I did see the uh, most of the presentation, and uh, it, I, 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 I love it. I, I love the idea. My, my question to Karen is the glass uh, bubble uh, on top, uh, that is a, a true mirrored glass that uh, you're going to create a, 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 a six inch diameter uh, true uh, piece of mirrored glass. Um, it's actually probably going to be stainless steel. Um, ah. Yeah, my intention is going to be metal of some kind. I'm sorry that that wasn't clear, but yeah, stainless steel is the most likely material. Um, and to do the mirror finish, there's a couple ways that we could go about it. Um, the stainless steel could be polished to a mirror finish and then put a clear coat on it. Um, it's important to do a clear coat just because, you know, it is going to get tagged or markered or something and you want a, some kind of sacrificial um, clear coat on there just so that you're not actually um, scrubbing directly on the metal when you have to clean paint off of it. Um, so it could be um, mirror finished metal that has a clear coat. Perhaps it could be um, uh, a powder coat. They have a, a sort of almost chrome finish powder coat over uh, steel or stainless steel might be a way to go about it or actually chroming it. So, so there's a few different options for how to achieve the mirror finish, but yeah, it'll definitely be steel and it'll definitely be of a thickness that um, you know, people can stand on it and it won't dent or damage because we know that that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah exactly, Karen. And I just, I, I wanted, uh, to just kind of get them an idea because yes, you're, you're right. Somebody is going to try and tag that. And yep. uh, someone's going to try and stand on it. And they're not going to try, they're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I mean, yeah, this it's going to be in the park. Nobody's going to be keeping an eye on it. It's got to be built to withstand um, interaction from the public you know when it's and it's not going to be interaction that i get to dictate so yeah i'm i'm very uh relieved to hear that you thought of that out yep. ahead of the project and uh i i think it's lovely oh, thank I, I, you. I really i really like it it's you know, great I, thank you you brought in all those elements of of the area including so little is given uh, thanks to the sewer. Right. <laughs> we don't think about it, but where would we be without the sewer? Oh. Not it, sounds like, it sounds like it's coming from someone whose day job is collecting sewer fees, Mr. Fetzko, but I'm, just, I'm not going to say that that's coloring your perspective at all. Well, all's, all's I know for sure is uh, everyone uh, complains about the sewer system and what they have to pay until they hit the lever and nothing happens. It does not leave the house. And then I know they'll pay anything to have it <laughs> leave the house. It's true, it's true. Well, storm sewers are important too. Um, and no, that's a, it's a really cool idea. I mean, there, there's such, I mean, as, as you know, from sitting through, uh, looking at the construction drawings and going to these meetings, you know, the stormwater aspect of this project is probably first and foremost, it's certainly, um, you know, the, the kind of phase one, you know, big part of phase one is trying to, trying to get this water uh, where it needs to be and, and into the system and into, you know, where we're trying to get it. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's just a cool way to highlight, highlight that. And you're right. I mean, the, the underground sewers is not something that people really focus on. Uh, so this, this is just, yeah, it's a neat way to tie it all together. Great. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I see we do have uh, one of our most famous uh, Southside Slopes residents who's joined Steve. us now. Uh, Steve. Esteemed, yes. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis Barry looks like he's uh, loading up the earphones now and uh, possibly going to, he's sitting with someone in a dark room, leaving himself mysterious. Um, but hopefully he's going to maybe unmute himself and provide his two cents as he so often does. Um, 
Mr. Barry, do you have anything to add? I'm not sure if you what you caught, if anything, of the presentation. I did not. And uh, was that comment about me? Are you always having something to say? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I missed Maybe. it. I didn't. I didn't have my ears on. Yep. Yep. I was talking about you, Dennis. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, what you're looking at is a sort of the final slide rendering of this of this uh, proposed art. Ah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. see a cloud well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Karen, I don't want you to have to fully repeat yourself, but maybe just for Dennis's benefit, could you just go through this slide only and just maybe give it a, a brief explanation? Yeah, so Dennis, I um, what I had uh, told these folks is that, you know, as I was studying the park and learning about it, one thing I did was, um, you know, I learned that there used to be a stream that ran through the park that's no longer there. Um, and then when looking at the construction drawings, I saw uh, a six foot wide sewer line runs mm. through the park where the stream used to be. So I was interested in that. Um, and then uh, and I also realized there is gonna be some surface streams in the park. Part of the phase one renovation is sort of recreating these surface streams and stormwater pools in the park. Um, and in some areas, the surface streams cross back and forth over the sewer line. Um, and most folks aren't aware that the sewer line is there. So I was sort of interested in honoring the former stream, which is now a sewer underground, um, acknowledging the surface water as well, and then also bringing in the water in the sky in the form of the clouds. So sort of uh, referencing the whole water cycle that is um, present there in the park. And so how I'm doing that is with um, my concept called Cloud Well. So you're seeing um, just a rough sketch model that I made. Mm -hmm. And so it basically takes the form of a stone or brick um, cylindrical well, um, and it'll be about three feet high and six feet in diameter. And um, this is a stainless steel mirror dome in the top oh. that reflects the clouds. So there'll be movement uh, in the top as you look down in. The diameter will be um, six feet in diameter. So the size and the shape references the sewer line. And it's also going to be located over top of where the sewer line is and uh, where the surface stream converges. So, um, so it kind of brings all three of those things together, the, the sewer, the stream, and the clouds. Uh -huh. Yeah, at first glance, of course, it looks like water, which is your intent, right? Mm -hmm. Is it stainless steel? Is that what? Yeah, the dome will be made of metal and probably stainless steel just so that it doesn't rust. Um, and it will be mirrored. How that will be done, I'm not sure. There's a few different ways that it can happen. It might be polished to a mirror finish and then clear coated, um, or maybe it'll be powder coated um, with, a, with a sort of chrome finish. Mm -hmm. So whatever, whatever is the cheaper and, and most durable option is what I'll go with. So no plan to actually capture the water and then send it down to the, the sewer. There is water running up on the hill for sure. Yes, there is definitely water running. It's going to be located um, near where the surface streams are. So this is showing the two potential locations for it, these little red dots here. Um, huh. So it'll go in one of those two locations. So it'll be near the surface stream. Uh-huh. And then that's also there, where the sewer line runs underneath. There will and then be there's a walkway right here as well. I'm sorry, I interrupted. There will be a surface stream. Yes. So ah, this, the so the blue area here is stepped uh -huh. stormwater pools. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a major feature of the phase one renovation is sort of highlighting the stormwater in the park. I, I know it's one of the purposes as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Capture. Yeah, they're turning it into a feature. That's nice. Good. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Dennis. Good questions. And uh, thanks, Karen, for going back over that. Um, do we have anyone Thank else? You. Uh, yeah, sure. 
Do we have anyone else who has uh, any questions or comments for Karen while while we're here? Uh, we also can accept, uh, you know, any emailed comments if anyone watches this at any other later time, or if there's anyone who thinks of something after the fact, our email is info at southsideslopes.com. So you could certainly, uh, you know, send, send any kind of message, comments, questions, and we can try to get those answered for you. Uh, but, yeah, I'll just pause here and just see if there's anyone else who has any additional questions. Ace, you have anything else from, from your end? Um. The original uh, stream was called Coal Stream. Dennis, do you remember a uh, Coal Stream? I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember. So no, you're never... saying the original, the stream that was there was called Coal Stream? I, I'm I'm not sure, uh, but okay. for for some reason in my mind, I I I came across the it, that old map. You're saying the old map called it. A, a different Corey? name. It, was, Corey? it didn't have a name on that map. There are there, on on one of the old maps, the street that runs next to it is called Quarry Run Road. So the best I could figure out is that maybe the stream was called Quarry Run, but it's sense. not. The stream is not actually labeled in any map that I have found. Hmm. Well, there is. Um... An old coal mine up there just below Quarry Street. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that's mine drainage. Oh, good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, you know, but I wondered about that. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's not accumulating under the ground. Maybe yeah. that's why. Right. Right. <laughs> But Dennis, that's a, it's very interesting. It's a great project, Karen. Thank you uh, so much for your time and effort on this. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And Thomas uh, and, and Sarah, thank you uh, for, for, in your respective roles at the city for helping facilitate tonight and bringing us all together. And, you know, if there's anything you need from the organization, uh, we'll, like I said, we'll continue to, um, you know, solicit any kind of uh, comments or questions and we'll certainly pass those along, but we're, we're, uh, we're happy to provide a forum or, you know, further input as, as needed. We appreciate it. Sure. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Gav, uh, Gavin. Sure. sure. Sorry, I was late. No, no problem. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, DCP. <laughs> yes, indeed. Sarah, do we need um, letters of support for conceptual review at Art Commission? You'll need the letters of support before final for review. Final. Okay. And um, we definitely, Thomas will work with, with me and Tony to get um, notes from today's meeting to accompany the final application. Okay. Um, and then community letters of support are broadly from the community. So we're not requiring that they have to be from certain entities. Okay. So what, what, what do... Karen, is it okay if we take your PowerPoint and sort of share it at least with uh, with our fellow board members? I think only a couple of us have seen it, but I I I'd like, yeah. I'm, I know they'll be curious, and if we yeah. have any additional input, I can pass that along. Yeah, absolutely. Great, thank you. All right, Thomas, anything else on on your end? No, it's thank you, everyone. Thank you, Karen and Sarah and Gavin. Um, yeah, this as this slide is showing, you can um, yeah, people want to send. Uh, letters, comment, you can email that, pacd at pittsburghpa.gov. I know, Gavin, you also mentioned the info at southsideslopes.org. Um, folks who want to do the snail mail approach can also mail testimony uh, to 200 Ross Street, fourth floor, uh, shown here on the screen, Pittsburgh PA 15129. Um, or you can attend the meeting, uh, our commission meeting, when it does get in front of our commission um, and share, uh, share feedback that way. So, um, and then I think, um, Gavin, I know this is just kind of some relevant information you guys had in your uh, slides too about Southside Slopes for folks that are interested yes, in that. Sure. Yeah. No, but really yeah. appreciate everyone's time. And, and thanks again, uh, Sarah and Karen, for, for, for presenting and the, the, everyone for the, the Q&A. All right. Have a great night, all. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you. Good, Good night. night. Good night. All right. Good night.